गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर थोड़ा सा लोअर कर दीजिए लैपटॉप का अच्छा ओके नाउ इट इज ओके यस ये हाइट वगैरह ठीक है हाँ बिल्कुल ठीक है सर ओके okay. मैं एक बार वो एक स्क्रीन शेयर कर रही हूँ दिव्या यस सर मैं ये मैं एक पेज का जो लिख के रखा हूँ कंप्यूटर के देख के मैं पढ़ सकता खोखर एंड प्रोफेसर प्रदीप पांडा एज द इंटायर वर्ल्ड इज अंडर द ग्रिप ऑफ दिस पैंडमिक आर पैनलिस्ट वुड लाइक टू प्रेजेंट देयर व्यूज ऑन चेंजिंग ऑन on their their views on changing scenario of the healthcare vertical whether it is public health hospital sector or healthcare information technology now i would like to invite our first panelist professor shankar das who is director ihmr delhi let me give a brief introduction about professor das uh, just a moment Uh, he was a professor and founding chair of the center for health policy planning and management at the school of health system studies at the tata institute of social sciences in mumbai between 2007 and 2014 as the first chair he provided academic leadership to the center and nurtured it to become a center of excellence he has over two decades of experience as a teacher as a trainer researcher and human resource development practitioner in the field of public health and health management his professional skills mainly include public health primary health care applied research health promotion and professional education he has extensive experience of collaborating and working at the highest level in government the public sector and academic research institutions at regional national and international levels i would like to invite professor das and we can proceed with the discussion yes professor das please unmute on please mute please unmute your mic unmute your mic please yes. Un- yes. Right. yeah yeah <laughs> right very good afternoon to everybody and uh, at the outset i really like to thank uh, uh, ms deepya and the team for organizing such a scintillating and such a interesting topic a webinar on paradigm shift in healthcare post covid 19 i appreciate the effort and initiative of the team and everybody who was engaged in this more than important aspect of this seminar would be the participant who have really taken time to register and taken time to join us today i really like to extend our warm welcome and join for this seminar and i'm sure this discussion will be more interactive and i'm sure it will be a benefit listening to everybody and uh, this is a welcome on behalf of my colleague my staff my management and uh, from the international institute of health management and research new delhi i once again extend all the listeners and the viewers for this particular program um at the outset i would really like to say a few words about uh, iihmr new delhi without that this discussion may not be in a proper context i say this is over uh, over almost a 10 or almost a decade the iihmr new delhi has emerged as a very important uh, global leader in the public health and uh, hospital administration and health information technology and uh, since uh, 10 years we have seen 10 batches of our very vibrant top class healthcare management professional who have graduated from our institution and taken very important positions all over the country as well as in different parts of the world particularly they are engaged in private sector international organization government public health civil society organizations and uh, many other allied areas we have carved off late we have carved we have been as a leader in the field of health research t 
teaching training as well as community extension program. And particularly, we also part of a very important policy advocacy in the field. Coming back to the present discussion today, and the present discussion of COVID pandemic situation in the healthcare sector today, that uh, this is a central stage of discussion all across the globe, and it is an important area. And this is a time when all the humanity is you know, battling with the coronavirus and battling with this uncertain social, political, and economic situation. Today, the bad news related to COVID-19, as you know, the increasing number of cases all over the world. But however, there is a greater hope that the virus infection rates have been plateauing down, but still there is not respite and not a very good optimism because of the current situation related to no availability of the cure or vaccine. Today, in India, at the moment, if you really look at 29,000 cases we have, unfortunately, we have lost 934 people due to coronavirus. And globally, if you have uh, seen this statistics, at the moment, we have 3 million cases who are active cases. We have lost very important 2,11,000 people in the world today. And it is causing huge amount of economic recession, societal unrest, and that's the reason these uncertainties and nervousness requires greater discussion and the discussion to find a way out of this situation. That's the reason we are here today. Most importantly, another issue should be discussed today and once we are talking about healthcare professionals. Last week, we have seen a very bad news. 19 medical staff of a Jahangir Puri hospital were infected while caring for the coronavirus patient. And this is reportedly that today, what we have seen about 59 doctors and nurses are affected through the secondary infection. And this hospital has been closed for fumigation and disinfection. So these are the kind of challenges in the health sector. And this is a kind of most uncertainties, most nervousness in the human population. We have no way to look forward for any solution, but there are some good news too. The good news related to coronavirus, I should say that it is basically globally, the situation of coronavirus has changed pretty much. In terms of we have learned permanently, we have learned certain behavior in our hygiene and our lifestyle, where we have learned a greater amount of resilience to live a life in most, most simplistic living. We also learned how to face cover, human distancing and hand and cough hygiene become the new normal today. Scientists all around the world, if you really look at, and looking for corona vaccine as well as cure, I'm sure within a month, fortunately, and or we can say that by a year also, we may find a vaccine and cure for this. There are several hundreds of people are volunteering for this trial of this vaccine. Something extraordinary, you know, humanitarian, you know, gesture shown in our own benevolency of the society. Something great to be seen. Around the world also, we have seen half a million people have recovered already because of these infections. And there is a no death sentence related to this coronavirus. There are a number of people also get cured and they go back to the normal life. And uh, this is definitely the hard work of our healthcare providers, particularly the medical staff, as well as the people who support them and the front line. These are the important people who should be recognized here. And, uh, and there is a need that we have also learned in a good news is that we have greatly learned the preparedness become more prominent and the concerns related to public health energy emergency and how do you respond to that? The countries have learned a great lessons in terms of investing in preparedness of such a public health emergencies. 
there are greater demand of healthcare manager to manage these uncertainties and there is kind of a situations and more efficiently skilled human resources are masked. And that's the reason discussion of healthcare human resource of tomorrow after this post COVID situation. Now, there is again another good news which you have seen the technological innovation in e health. The electronic health, particularly, is uh, taking a central stage of our healthcare delivery. IT application concerning healthcare. Healthcare is growing very swiftly. The strategies such as sharing electronic health record, accessing health information on internet, telemedicine, online appointment and consultation, mobile health, and self-measurement devices, all are indicating a very significant paradigm shift in the next decade to come. During this lockdown, there is an important, uh, you know, development has taken place in terms of our education sector. There are growing number of software profit-making ventures volunteering to offer their product as a free of cost platform for teaching learning in you know, a product in the government system. U United as UGC, AICT, platforms are getting more and more popular amongst the student. It is a completely free of charge. Some of the teaching learning platforms which would be easily available for all students could be, it is a ad tech model, AITC.org, ELIS portal. These are very prominent platforms which gives us a greater amount of impetus in teaching learning process and this Long time lockdown period can be optimally utilized through these online teaching learning processes. Coming back to the healthcare industry, I analyze it into three different advantages. Uh, I believe that there are differently at the moment uh, in a transition of healthcare. We have an emerging strong demand in healthcare industry. Wherever we have seen, there are statistics either from World Bank, IMF organizations, which is already predicted that India is going to be the top and fastest growing healthcare industry, producing $280 billion globally. By 2020, it is going to rise to $8.6 trillion. This is a huge industry all over the world. And the India is the only country where the whole world is looking at in terms of cost-effective and more human treatment, more efficient treatment and uh, uh, medical care in the globe today. And there is a rising level because this is happening not only because this India is uh, progressing very rapidly, it is in the transition of this progress. We have a growing amount of income level in the populations, growing, uh, also growing healthcare awareness, and therefore, there is a huge amount of demand related to healthcare. And also, there are increasing number of non-communicable diseases that also lifestyle diseases requiring greater amount of attention from the healthcare industry. That is the strong demand for tomorrow that what we could see. This is another type of a demand which has been created, and that is the advantage to Indian healthcare industry. That is the given the attractive opportunities, which is really growing today. As you see that access to the healthcare, that you know, there are possibly about healthcare, IT is growing at a rapid space where we will have already, there is a predict projection of 40 million jobs will be created by 2020 only in healthcare insurance sector. This is something, enormous amount of opportunity of healthcare for the, for the qualified master's degree in healthcare, hospital and health IT students. Also, there is a, another impetus related to this development. If you see, there are one lakh jobs that are already created because of Ayushman Bharat in the national health you know, protection scheme at a national level. One lakh jobs are already rolled down, and there is a growing number of students and the aspirants are joining the public health 
you know, healthcare in the country. The other area of our advantage, if you could see, it is increasing demand of human resources. An increasing number of human resources already seen in the public health sector. We have been there for pretty many years, almost nine, since 1946, up to the board committee. And since then, we have uh, subcenters has gone up to 168,418. Where is the primary health centers? We have 33,476. If you see the doctor's population has proportionally increased. Today we have almost about 24,000 extra doctors who has been registered and retained their job and their engagement in our national you know, healthcare system. Also there is another impetus which has given a good thrust in our health systems is that national and global health policy so, you know, support. What exactly has happened? Globally, if you really look at Ayushman Bharat is the largest funded healthcare system in the world. And it is basically by two, September 18, we have launched this program for a huge amount of coverage with all districts, all states. Coming back to the job opportunities of tomorrow's healthcare professionals. The current uh, you know, situation of hospital health, health IT sector have emerged as a great revenue generation you know, profession in the current situation. If you really look at, we have the places where they are engaged. They are engaged in public sector, private sector, corporate, international organization, national healthcare portals, and also health insurance companies. And they are constantly looking for qualified, trained, skilled, human resources. Just yesterday when I was trying to do a little bit of search, I just did a Google search of healthcare you know, job demand in this country. Within not even a second, 0.63 second, it has created 37,000 to 45,000 jobs in different job portals. And those job portals, all you know, is your Nokri.com, Indeed job, Monster India, Times Job, LinkedIn, and Freshers World, and India, healthcarejob.com. I hope you understand the magnitude of the job requirement and the truly the gap between the, 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 what is necessary as a qualified people versus the qualified available human resources. There's a huge gap. And this is the, one of the best market for tomorrow's career development of any young professional who wants to really do a humanitarian work and change, bring some change in this world. If I could recall in 2003, the, the, uh, Dr. Lee Ook was the you know, WHO Secretary General in one of the World Health Assembly. He asked representative from 142 countries and he asked a very vital question. What is the critical questions you are facing in your country? Univocally, every country says it is a crisis of human resources. Crisis of human resources, you understand. That is said 17 years back. Again, in 1976, WHO also had the similar kind of situations where they started talking about that clinician cannot be managing good healthcare management system. Therefore, you require a very trained human resources who are equipped to handle the systemic issues such as financial management, human resources, information technology, materials management, healthcare safety. All these is a very important you know, gamut where our healthcare professionals are trained today. And that's the reason today is to, there is a vacuum of good healthcare management and administration professionals. Coming back to a very important area, that recognition of any professional course needs to be looked at very carefully. All the viewers, all the, all the, all the, all the listeners must be wondering, where are we located today in Delhi? International Institute of Health Management Research, New Delhi, as I said that 
very quickly, within a span of one decade, we found ourselves at a global map. We have been recognized by all India Council of Technical Education, which has approved our institution in 2008. Every year after year, based on our excellent performance, we have renewed and renewed and renewed. Until today, we have the recognition of AICTE. This is a recognized body from the government of India under the human resource development, under the Department of you know, Higher Education. It recognizes the degrees and educational qualification in the country. And it recognizes our degree as an MBA diploma equivalent to master's degree. So this is a very important thing to say. We are also recognized by the National Board of Accreditation. This is also very important you know, a statutory body by the government of India, Human Resource Ministry really looks at it. We are also recognized by the Association of Indian Universities. We are also recognized and also enlisted by the Ministry of Human Resource Development in their index in, in, our, in, their index in terms of accredited and recognized institution in the country. In our institution, we have a very, very prominent, three very important programs we run at a master's level. We also run many other programs as the MDP, Management Development Program. My esteemed colleague will discuss all this, but quickly tell you what we offer at MBA level. This is MBA and healthcare management, one of the best programs we offer in the country today. We also offer MBA in hospital administration, and this has found an extremely good grip in this professional you know, arena of the country. We are at par with the most and the most recognized institution in the country. MBA in health information technology. As I say, this is the, the time where, which is a post-COVID time, this is going to be another boom area of our healthcare industry, health information technology. There's a greater amount of demand impact in terms of e-health and, uh, and the telemedicine. And this technology will take over the direct face-to-face -face doctor patients, you know, care in a clinic. It will be mostly in the virtual world, which is found to be tomorrow's vision for the world. All, all over the world, people are deliberating and really strengthening this virtual system of healthcare delivery, which is supposed to be and found to be very effective, you know, mechanism in many countries. Now, why this, you know, IIHM and New Delhi? I would say that IIHM and New Delhi is a, one of the institution which has a state-of-art architectural infrastructure in the center of the city of Delhi, that is in Dwark, very accessible campus from all over. Renowned multidisciplinary faculty members we have trained abroad most of them have studied abroad in institutions like John Sapkin, London School of Economics, you know, University of Florida, University of Lowell, all these places, University of Warwick, all these people also they have not only studies, they have a very strong collaboration, academic nature, research. They are also engaged in, in terms of this. This collaboration also helps our students to have many more interactions a study tour abroad and a study India program. Those students who come here, we have cross fertilization of learning in this kind of a very challenging and multicultural you know, environment of learning. Those are the challenges which we basically pursue very meticulously. That's the reason we are standing apart in the country because of our uniqueness and our delivery system. We also have a 100% placement at the moment because of our reputation, because of our networking, because of our placement agencies. We have a very strong grip with this you know, placement at the moment. We have a range of scholarship opportunities to the meritorious and needy students that people who deserve, we give them you know, a scholarship. We also have a professional affiliation of the stu student body with the National International Forum. The faculty member do a lot of hand-holding in terms of giving you this kind of a, you know, linkages and collaboration with other agencies. 
numerous other things we can say that we have an academic excellent curriculum and we have an overall professional development and growth of the student is paramount importance in our campus. You don't grow academically, you grow as a person, you grow spiritually, and also you are a better off in terms of facing the world tomorrow. You are tuned socially, culturally, spiritually, and that's the way the professionals are today to be the success of tomorrow. This is the way we organize. But I will not take much of your time. I would basically talk about today's paradigm shift related to COVID. This has really brought us to a great uncertainty and great nervousness. But it is not the dead end. Believe me, there is a University of Singapore of technology and design has given us a wonderful forecast. Forecast is that by you know first week of May will completely plateau down this coronavirus infection in many countries, particularly in India, will be plateauing down by the time the coronavirus may be a virus of history. The way the virus came and gone, for example, SARS, Ebola, Zika, all these HIV AIDS, all these were there in humanity. We have fought it successfully. We have battled through the bad time, and today we are in a good time. But I would say that before I leave, before I leave this forum to all of you, I say that think positively. Now thinking positively, why do you think positively? You can build your muscle by exercising, jogging, walking. These are all physical activities must for the body. But what happens to the, your exercise of the mind? We don't know the tricks of this exercise in mind. That's the reason thinking positive and a thinking positive is a scientifically proven fact. When you think positively, it basically creates happiness hormones. And what are those happiness hormones? As you know, it is an endorphin, dopamine, and serotonin. Obviously, these will be increased as you go on with your life with much more happiness, much more chill, laughter, optimism. So this is a time to inculcate all these values, inculcate all these hopes, so that you don't really fall prey to your depressive thoughts and those negative aspects of creating those negative hormones. I hope those are the things you need to understand. And as body only needs positive thoughts, create positivity, negative thought creates negativity. As much as possible, deviate yourself from negative thoughts. Get into more energetic and relaxed way of life and think positively and don't feel lazy, and laziness and inactivity is going to lead to the negative thoughts, and then pessimism, and then pessimism leads to all kind of a negative hormonal discharges in the body. Try to create this endorphin, dopamine, and serotonin. Thank you so much. And I really hand over this mic to my colleague, Dr. Deepi. Uh, thank you, Professor Das, for sharing uh, the scenario of the healthcare industry, right, and the how people have to keep themselves uh, mentally fit during this tough time. Now, I would like to uh, invite uh, Professor A.K. Koker. Let me give a brief introduction about Professor A.K. Koker. He is working here with IHMR as Professor and Dean Training since August 2012 after his retirement from ESIC. He is a medical graduate with four sport graduations in the field of healthcare administration and hospital administration. Besides working in different positions in ESIC medical services, for 36 years, he has been teaching as visiting faculty at FMS, University of Delhi, and Institute of Management Studies, YMCA, for 24 years. He has also been a visiting faculty of IHMR, NHIFW, SAIL, that is Steel Authority of India Limited, and NTPC. Hospital administration has been one of his prime areas of interest, and he has held important positions of additional medical superintendent, medical superintendent, state medical commissioner, and has been instrumental in developing policies and procedures related to biomedical waste management at institution as well as state level. I would like to invite Professor Coker to be on the board and kindly share your views with respect to the hospital sector. Sir. 
Thank you, Divya. Let me first of all thank our director for giving such an overview and touching most of the aspects that are related to the COVID-19. Secondly, let our, it is high, high time that uh, we pay our tributes to the medical professional and all those health professionals who are engaged in uh, essential services day in and day out. And when we are sitting at home, these people are working out and taking all the risks within the hospital and also in providing us security. Since a lot has been talked about the other issues, I'll be mainly confining to the hospitals and the hospital management per se. Every one of us knows that, uh, and I, uh, I now feel that uh, the paradigm shift after COVID-19 is already visible because the unknown sector where people don't, did not give much importance to the health sector and the hospitals is on the forefront. So this is one, going to be one of the biggest paradigm shift in future, wherein people are trying to think in terms of their health. They are trying to think in terms of the health manpower. They are going to think of the hospitals and the role of hospitals. As far as the paradigm shift of hospitals is concerned, many of you must be knowing that hospitals starting as a charity organization, as terminal care, as a segregational care, has changed its role to a comprehensive health care. And in fact, today is the world wherein the hospitals are visited by everyone virtually in four years. One in four person visits hospital every year in one form or the other. It may be for his family ways, or it may be because of seeing his friends, or it may be because of going for some vaccinations, admissions, or other things. Hospitals are no doubt the most important component of the healthcare industry because they deal with the question of life and death. And you know that the moment the COVID started, everybody was talking of the preparation of hospitals to take the casualty. When we think of hospital per se, hospital is an industry like any other organization. There have been a number of uh, discussions on this whether the hospital is industry or not, but it continues to be an industry and has to be managed as an industry. And like any other organization, it has also to deal with the managerial functions of planning, organizing, staffing, directing, controlling, all those functions which are required by the management. You know, there was a time when clinicians were managing the hospitals. Because of the changing paradigm and because of the fact that the people who are managing the clinical side are really very good as far as technical competency is concerned, which is uh, you know known all over the world because of our doctors, not only in India, but abroad. But when it comes to management, we require a special kind of the workforce that is the hospital managers. This, these people require excellent communication, leadership skills, and have they have to have the capacity to work 24 seven hour because they are into the business all the time. It is a, when you come to the hospital, you will see that the hospital has been the fastest growing industry. And within the last five years, it has doubled and it will be doubling every year. Whenever, when you talk in terms of monetary terms also, they have within five years, the revenue of the hospitals has doubled in 2017 to 2022. The rate of uh, increase is to the extent of 17 to 80 percent. That is the growth rate of the hospital business. And you can think of that naturally. It will lead to the doubling of the services within the five years. All of us know that uh, we are in a world super specialist corporate, corporate hospital and now the, our director is talking about Ayushman Bharat. These are becoming very, very important for each and every person. And uh, we find that the growth of the these corporate hospitals has brought to the fore that private institution is taking up more of the business than of the government institutions. And in fact, 
supplementing the efforts of the government to get people who can uphold the chaos. Added to all this is, you know, the growth of the medical tourism, which is mainly attributable to our hospitals. And uh, then again, this has also been increasing at a rate of 18% annually and is worth 9 billion by two, even today, that is 2020. The, with the growth of the private sector and with the realization of the government, that private sector has to be involved in the form of public-private participation. We find that uh, private sector has done outdone the efforts of the government, and 60% of the inpatient and 80% of the outpatients are going to the private sector. Hus I'm talking all these things because hospital industry will keep on growing and becoming the faster and faster in business, whatever may happen with the paradigm shift, you will find that there may be a problem of automobiles, there may be a problem of tourism, there may be a problem with any of the transport sectors, metros, rails, or by air, but hospital sector will keep on growing as it is growing. Maybe it may become faster because now we are realizing more and more and looking at all friends from where we can increase our investments in hospitals. And with, you know, the, all of you may be aware here that with 100% FDI, there will be a big boom in our drugs and pharmaceuticals. We are already the leaders and you know that most of, uh, at this critical juncture, India is the one who has helped most of the countries with basic drugs. And we are getting all kudos for that. And uh, we are going to be the leaders in drugs and pharmaceuticals, diagnostic hospitals and diagnostic centers, medical devices and surgical appliances in the coming years. And uh, this is going to be a big change as far as the COVID situation is concerned. Then what, what is our basic is, though many of our you know, people have been quite critical about the hospital services, but hospitals, both in government as well as in private sectors, have been trying to improve their services, whether it is through grading or through accreditation. Whatever efforts may be, the attempt by that time, we can boast of we are definitely providing quality services, and that is the cause people are people from neighboring countries and from you know west are coming to our centers for medical treatment. Then. What I saw, uh, as far as uh, when uh, we talk of uh, the management education of the students in hospital management, there is a tremendous scope for them for their development. They can uh, join both the government as well as the private institutions. They can go from a junior executive to a CEO. There are a lot of examples already existing, which I have not tried to like to talk at this one at the moment. Then they, are, they can make progress in any of the sectors which are related to hospitals, which I was talking of medical appliances and others. Then as to start with, I said hospital is the same when functions, the hospital managers, they can be applied in any of the operations, human resource department, finance, supply chain, then, you know, marketing, PR, and host of other factors whatsoever may be related to the support services of the heart hospitals. And as I have been talking, medical tourism is another lucrative area for most of the people who you know, have interest in the medical tourism per se. We require lacks of managers. There are different figures given at different places, like uh, Dr. Das said that, uh, you know, this um, four lakh people are to be employed in Ayushman Bharat and lakh, one lakh has already been employed. And uh, there are almost 1600 hospitals which are already impaneled with the Ayushman Bharat. There are figures ranging from three, 30 lakhs, 25 lakhs, to even going up to the million. So the crux of issues is that we do require hospital managers. And 
requiring hospital manager, first of all, the people must have that interest in hospitals. They must be emotionally attached to the hospitals and to the services, public services that are required. And of course, they must be qualified in case they want to get up, get above that ladder which they want to think of. I do not want to uh, explain more about HMR. Dr. Das has already explained what IHMR has been making all efforts in the field of and being uh, you know, attached to it for more than three decades. I can only say that it is the unique and one of the top organizations which is providing services both on health, health management and hospital management and of course last decade in healthcare IT also. When we talk of the one of the main concerns of the students is the placement of the services. We, the hospital students have been getting very good placements. You can name any hospital, maybe not only in India, whether it is from Poltis, Max, or Medanta to R2, any of the you know corporate sector or in the private sector or in some of the government uh, NHM uh, hospitals. We, we are, students are placed and we are proud of them that whenever somebody talks and praises them we feel very happy about them i'll not uh, take much more time but let me only conclude that uh, hospital management is as i have always felt the moment you enter the gates of the hospital till you leave the hospital you are obliging the people and that gives you a lot of satisfaction thank you Thank you so much, sir, for uh, sharing your knowledge, your experience and wisdom with our attendees. Now, I would like to uh, welcome Professor Pradeep Panda, who is Dean Academics with IHMR Delhi. First, I would like to give a brief introduction about Professor Panda. He is a health economist as well as demographer by training with significant experience in teaching, research and consultancy. He is a professor of health economics at IHMR Delhi. Earlier, he was a project coordinator for the implementation of National Family Health Survey, NFHS 4, for the state of Orissa. Prior to joining the IHMR, he has worked in reputed national and international organizations in various capacities as Director of Research and Implementation at Microinsurance Academy, Director of Rural Research at Institute of Rural Research and Development, Health Economist Population Council, and as associate professor with Center for Development Studies. He has conducted several research projects in the health sector as a principal investigator or the project director and has published several research papers in reputed international journals on development studies and public health. We would like to welcome you, Professor Panda, on board. We would like you to share your views with respect to the changes in the healthcare or the scenario of the healthcare industry with respect to the public health and the healthcare information technology. Sir. Thank you, Dibya. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Das and uh, Professor Koker. You have made my task easy. Already you have covered a came out of issues post COVID-19 global health as well as hospital. Uh, a very good afternoon to all of you who are present here. I would like to focus on the paradigm shift in the healthcare sector in India post COVID-19 with a focus on job opportunities in public health and health information technology. There is a significant demand for research opportunities in health management and health economics, namely forecasting the test kits required for community-based testing in the general population, pattern of disease and daily disability adjusted live years due to the change scenario. There are jobs coming up in the production management domain in pharmaceutical sector and biotechnology companies. With the increase in number of hospitals and clinics, new job opportunities will be created for healthcare managers, executives, administrators, and financial analysts. Another area which is very important is digital healthcare provider. There has been an acceleration in the use of telehealth and remote patient monitoring, so-called telemedicine. 
among the general population across countries. The boom in technologies and software will pave the way for new jobs. In terms of emergencies like COVID-19, example being Taiwan's digital connectivity. Post SARS in 2003, Taiwan heavily invested in healthcare, especially mobile health systems, telehealth care, Internet of Things, IoT equipment and solutions, wearable devices, health management systems, medical bioinformatics, security. All people in quarantine were monitored through mobile devices, daily entering temperatures and symptoms. It helped remote monitoring of spread. In India, mother and child tracking system, MCTS, is an initiative of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare to leverage information technology for ensuring delivery of full spectrum of healthcare and immunization services to pregnant women and children up to five years of age. Government and private investment in setting up hospitals in tier two and tier three cities under the flagship program Aishman Bharat, PMJ, Prime Minister's Jan Arugya Yojana, and linking of artificial intelligence, AI, and blockchain technology in the Aishman Bharat have created huge job opportunities for healthcare managers, researchers, administrators, and health IT specialists. An estimated 11 lakhs jobs will be created in the next five to seven years, according to the Prime Minister, Mr. Modi. And as Professor Das has already told, already we have created one lakh job, but we are expecting 11 lakhs, 10 lakhs more. Resource allocation, COVID-19 is putting a lot of demand on an overburdened healthcare system, overwhelming the capacity of hospitals, emergency departments, and outpatient centers. This results in critical shortage of staff, space, and supplies, which can have a negative impact on patient outcome. Allocating resources appropriately when the demand starts to exceed those resources is critical to keeping operations running for patients who need care. Pharma companies are expanding their product base, leading to more opportunities for healthcare management professionals. There has been enhanced focus in the public health sector now more than ever. Need human resources in national health mission across the center and Indian state. Healthcare analytics, a team of experts on healthcare analytics, economics, and insurance who collectively provide advanced analytic insight and big data capabilities to healthcare payers and insurers. This will inform the efficiency, financial sustainability, and effectiveness of healthcare system. Health information managers, enormous amounts of data flow through healthcare facilities, and health information managers are primarily responsible for overseeing the proper collection, securitization, and application of the data. They manage the implementation of new health information systems, develop and maintain a facilities policy for the storage and safekeeping of the data, or train staff on data-related processes. Health management researcher, researchers in healthcare management push the field forward through advanced theory, empirical study, and publication in professional and academic journals. Researchers can work for think tanks, government agencies, universities, or consultancies. This is not necessarily a full-time or permanent position. However, many researchers will also work in academia as professors or deans of healthcare-related programs. Healthcare management research tackles the biggest question in healthcare and the results can shape public health curricula, corporate and government policies, and even population health. Finally, from a growth perspective, post COVID-19, I strongly believe that in the next 25 years, 
the healthcare can be what the information technology sector has done over the last 25 years. Given the tremendous potential of job creation, the healthcare sector can become the engine of India's future growth. It has the potential to be a significant job creator across the value chain of caregiving post COVID-19. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor Panda, for sharing your thoughts with respect to the healthcare IT scenario. Now, we would like to take up uh, the questions being raised by our attendees. The first question uh, that has been raised is, we have seen that in the last 40 days, we have been successful in scaling the healthcare infrastructure in the country by multiple times. Now, since a portion of the infrastructure has been developed, and I presume that it will continue to be developed further at a faster speed. How do you see the opportunity unfolding for healthcare professionals in terms of career growth? The panelist. Professor Koker. On mute, please. Yes. You see, one thing uh, the right in the beginning, I said that I, uh, this uh, healthcare facilities at the hospitals have been now brought onto the forefront and uh, right is the you know the i think that it is a rather a comment and uh, that uh, everything you know related to the hospitals and health field there has been a lot of improvements and uh, there are infrastructure facilities the operational facilities and everything is getting increased uh, yes uh, i think uh, this is a lesson that we will learn that uh, our uh, preparedness to such type of uh, you know, contingencies has to be kept in mind and uh, it's a good less. Uh, I feel uh, whatever has been started will continue with our uh, present, uh, you know, present uh, political uh, will, which is already there. I hope uh, that's right. Right. Uh, the another question uh, is, as we know, the private healthcare sector is facing economic crisis and there is very, very less patient inflow. Many chains of hospitals are not able to generate even revenue. So, so just, how do you I, think we I, can I, overcome I, it in near future? Dr. Deepya, I answered that question. I have written to them. Oh. <laughs> I just like to take one very interesting question. Because this will benefit Hello. all the participants. Can you hear me, Dr. Debya? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So there is one question that as the management student of health, what are the skills that we can learn and develop during this lockdown period? I think it's a wonderful question. Whoever has asked, I think this is a most critical question which you are talking. What you need to do at the moment is that is that there are a number of areas a student can definitely develop. Particularly, you can read online principles of management in healthcare, what it is, what are the different theories, what are the applications, what are the case studies of management in healthcare. All these are online. It's just an information. Once you start learning, you will be able to apply your analytical mind to problem solving. And those case studies and all solutions will give you a greater value to health management course. Also in terms of the student of a higher learning, I'm saying you are a master's degree student, professional student, the research and documentation is a very important you know, part of your program. And the more you learn researching and documenting, and there is a greater your value into the job market. How do you research? How do you formulate a question? How do you develop a proposal? What is the research method? What are the different strategies, research design? What are the specific sampling technique? What are the ways you can formulate an instrument and tool for data collections? All these, if you start reading simple literature, it will remain with you. I'm sure when you come back to the school or university system, it will again revive from your old memories. Nothing goes out of the memory, believe me, it is all stored. And how do you store it? Oh, it can be recapitulated by, again, you can bring it back. Writing skill is another very important area. People who can communicate well, people who can write well, they are the best people in the world, and they have the job all the time. 
in the market. So these are the techniques you should see from the academic angle. And another angle you should also develop in terms of your auditory skill. Stand in front of the mirror and start speaking a particular topic. Look at your body language, gesture, lip movement, your expression of face. All these you should learn it because the management of any profession needs to be a very good communicator, very good convincer. You know, that's the way possibly communication is skill at a verbal level, communication is skill at a written level. That you have to really start doing. Maintaining a simple diary every day. You know, the most successful people in this world has a diary with them. And that diary is every year it changes. I hope you understand. That is a great habit of a great leaders. And I don't say that you will be great leaders, but the following that, you are towards the path of a success. Anybody, anytime, you need to go back to the earlier pages, look at that, it will revive your memory, revive your strategies, revive your learnings. This is the way possibly you can develop. And also I say that take a lot of physical activities, either jogging, walking, taking a sun bath onto the open you know, sun, and also concentrate and be happy as a human being. Come to our website called IHM or Delhi. There are frequently asked questions on our website. And uh, three types of questions we have given you, all the attendees. One question is related to your career concern. Second question, frequently asked questions are related to mental health in COVID situation. Third, what we have given you that your FAQs related to the health anxieties and health related questions related to myths, some misconceptions, scientific facts, figures, all are there. Apart from that, what you can do, my dear participant, you can definitely take a test, which is PHQ-9, Public Health Question 9, that gives you the ranking. And based on the ranking, you have the score of mild, moderate, and severe level. Based on that, if you can come, want to come, you click on the score, and you will be diverted to our counselors and directly pick your phone and call them and ask questions. We are all available here. Please, this is a free of cost service. Make maximum use of it. And uh, that should be my little request to all of you. And it is such a wonderful, even though I can't see you, but I felt that you are all there with us listening very captively. And thank you for participating. It feels so good that to interact with the people like you and hope to see you sometime in our campus. And we really like to grow together in this world. And this is the way possibly we believe in this sentiment. And everybody has a place in our campus. Good luck. Thank you so much. And over to Dr. Deepya for concluding remark. Uh, it was a, a nice session where our panelists, our esteemed panelists, have shared with their knowledge and wisdom with respect to how they perceive the scenario of healthcare industry will be there post COVID-19. I would request all of you that you can share your questions because I lost some connection. I lost the questions on the way while conducting the webinar. So please post your questions if, are, if there are any questions. Please post it on the link given on your email for which you have attending the webinar and we will address all your queries with respect to this particular healthcare scenario and with respect to IHMR Delhi. I thank all of you for being there with us for one hour for having a, a good discussion regarding the paradigm shifts in healthcare post COVID-19. Thank you all. Good luck all of you. Thank you, Ms. Dibba. It is wonderful thank coming you, to you. Professor, Thanks. Sir. Professor, good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Dr. Professor. Dr. Panda, thank you. Thank okay, you. Sir. See you again sometime. Bye-bye. Hi, at five. Okay,